what's good everybody it's your boy ace here back with another youtube video so uh, about like i think a week ago i posted my first ever fantasy basketball video and it got like 800 views or something like that so did pretty well it was pretty successful for my standards at least so i'm gonna be doing more fantasy basketball content like i said i'd be doing um so i got a waiver wire video for you guys i'll probably do like a buy low sell high video pretty soon it's only been like a week of nba so you know there's not that much data to go off of and all that but y'all y'all uh played the the fantasy basketball video a lot so um i gotta keep making that fantasy basketball content and i love fan i love basketball and i love fantasy basketball um no problem with me so let's go ahead and recap the last youtube video first so for starters uh my first ever fantasy basketball video was a boom and bust player video so i had two booms two guys that um, I told you guys would be really really good this year that I liked for their ADP I liked their ADP value and then three guys that I thought would be busts this year considering their draft position considering their ADP so let's go ahead and look at how these guys are doing so far so for my two booms my first boom was LaMelo Ball his ADP was 29 so he was being drafted at the 29th spot and I just I talked about how much I loved him and his ranking so far this year is ninth. So his ADP was 29 and he's ranked ninth in points leagues because all my videos are points leagues. I clarified that at the beginning of the last video. It's only for points leagues. So his ADP for points leagues was 29th and his ranking so far this season is ninth. So that's very, very good to see. LaMelo Ball is ranked number nine this year so far on a per game basis. So really, really good. He's averaging 47.60 points. Fantasy points per game for uh, standard points leagues. So, so far, he's been a very good boom. I also said to handcuff him with Trey Mann um, because LaMelo Ball, the only concern with LaMelo Ball is always going to be his injuries. He has had multiple ankle injuries, and I talked about how he's wearing two ankle braces this season on both ankles, so that should help him a little bit with <clears throat> reducing injuries. And I also said just in case... To, if you are going to draft LaMelo Ball to pair him with Trey Mann, make sure you get Trey Mann with one of your last picks in the draft. And Trey Mann has actually been really, really good so far this season, just standalone um, by himself. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to find his name on what he's ranked 101st on a per game basis, which isn't bad for where he was going. His ADP, I don't remember his ADP, but I think it was like 160th or 170th. So not only is it good that you're handcuffing him with LaMelo Ball, he's actually had pretty good value just standalone on his own. Brandon Miller has been hurt, so he has seen a bigger role in these games. But still, if you have LaMelo Ball, Trey Mann's on your waiver wire for whatever reason, pick up Trey Mann <clears throat> just in case LaMelo Ball gets hurt. Our second boom was Jalen Johnson. So his ADP was 52nd. Uh, I was telling you guys how I think he's a great steal. I think he has a very, very high ceiling. His ranking so far is 43rd per game. So his ADP was 52. I was telling y'all to draft him. His ranking so far is 43rd. So we're off to a pretty good start. He's been pretty lackluster for my expectations because I feel like he could easily be a top 40 to top 35-ish player. Even a top 30 player, I feel like he has that potential. Um, he has been pretty lackluster this year, I will not lie. But he is coming off a very, very good game. He had his best game of the season last game. So that's very good to see from him. Um, and he's just showing just showing flashes. He's He was 52nd ADP. I told you guys to get him. He's 43rd so far. So he has returned his draft value so far and then some. And I think he's only going to get better. He's coming off a 30-point, 12-rebound, 7-assist game. I'm telling you guys, he is a very, very um, possible candidate for a 20-point season and a 10-rebound per game season. Um, he's not there quite yet. He has had some pretty bad games, but even with those bad games, he still has returned your draft value. So that's off to a good start as well. And then I had three busts for you guys. My first bust was Jalen Green. His ADP was 39th, and his ranking so far this season is 32nd. So we've slightly been wrong so far on Jalen Green. He is peaking right now. I got I got to hand it to him. He's averaging 29 points per game. The crazy thing is though, he's averaging 29 points per game, and he's still only 32nd ranking. Um, I think that points per game obviously is going to regress a little bit. He's not a 30-point per game scorer for a whole season. That's going to regress. I told you guys, he's not going to give you rebounds. He's not going to give you assists. He's not going to give you a block. He's not going to give you steals. He's like a, he's just an empty scorer, and he's been scoring very, very well this season. So we got to give him credit where credit is due, but I do think that is going to go down. So his ADP was 39th. I told you guys to avoid him. He's 32nd right now. So it looks, it looks bad right now. It could be worse, obviously, but it looks bad right now. But I'm telling you guys, stay the course. I don't think he's going to be able to 
<clears throat> produce a top 40 season. I think that those points per game numbers are going to regress, and we'll see how that goes. But so far, um, that take is, is a bad take, quote-unquote bad take so far, so we'll give it to him. Our second bust was Pascal Siakam. His ADP was 30th. I was telling you guys not to draft him, and he's 38th right now. So, so far, it's looking like a solid take. Um, he's only averaging 18.5 points per game, 6.8 rebounds per game, 5.3 assists per game. And Halliburton has not been getting many assists. I looked at Pascal Siakam, his potential assists and his actual assists, and his conversion rate is just insanely high. So I definitely expect those assist numbers to regress and go down a little bit. And Halliburton's assist numbers have been very low, so he should see positive regression. His numbers should go up. I think Siakam's numbers should go down. And even with his very, very high conversion rate right now, he's still not returning his draft value. So... Good take so far. And then our last bus was Kawhi Leonard, 47th ADP, and he hasn't even played a game like we all knew. And they said he's out indefinitely. He could be out even longer than people expected. So, I mean, that was a pretty obvious bus. It doesn't take a genius to realize that drafting Kawhi is a terrible decision, but he was still going at the 47th ADP, which was absolutely insane to me. I was telling you guys, draft like Jalen Johnson there. Why are you going to get Kawhi? He's not even going to play that many games. So, Two busts, two out of the three busts have looked good so far. One bus has looked bad so far, and it's only by like six rankings, and I expect it to, I expect um, our take to still stand. And then both of our booms have looked very, very good so far. LaMelo Ball has just been an absolute boom. Um, and then Jalen Johnson has returned his value for sure, and I think he's going to be even better. Yeah, that, those are just how <clears throat> those takes are looking so far. But anyway, let's get into this video. I have three, I have six waiver wire pickups for you guys. I have three guys that are rostered in about 30 to 40% of leagues. And then I have three guys that are deeper ads for deeper leagues that are rostered less than 20% of leagues. So remember guys, the thing with fantasy basketball, the thing with waiver wire pickups is it's kind of hard to give you advice because you may have a different league than me. You may be in an eight man league. So like if you're in an eight man league, all of these six guys that I'm going to say right now probably are not even good enough to be on your roster. <clears throat> so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Take my advice with a grain of salt because it really just depends on your league. It really depends on your league settings and it really depends on how many people are in your league, how many people you have on your roster. I'm in a very unique league. So I have very, very different scoring systems than um, in regular leagues. And I also have a ton of people rostered. So I have 12 starters and then I have a ton of people on the bench. So I'm in a very, very different league. But so if you guys have specific questions, like let's say I tell you to, pick up a certain guy and you guys are like oh should i should i pick up that guy and drop this guy go ahead and ask those questions in the in the comments um i'll try to get to as many comments as i can as quick as i can because i'm going to get to every comment it's just a matter of when will i get to the comment you know um so leave your comments if, if you have specific questions I'll, I'll try to get to you guys as quickly as i can because <clears throat> um it's kind of hard to give you general advice and in, in like not knowing your league not knowing your settings not knowing how many people are in your league not knowing like how many people roster in your league so it gets very complicated right so this is just general advice if you guys have specific questions go ahead and ask them in the comments feel free to ask them in the comments and i'll reach out to you guys but anyway let's get into these waiver wire pickups so remember once i show you guys these players and you see their rankings you're like whoa they're ranked so high in your league and not in mine it's because my league has different scoring setting settings my, my league is a very unique scoring setting so that's why but the first pickup is going to be Christian Braun, who's rostered in 30.8% of leagues, 30.7% of leagues. So like I said, my league has very, very different scoring systems. So if you see position rank 15 here for me and you're like, whoa, he's only like 27 for me, whatever, it's because my league has a very different scoring system. So <clears throat> that is why. But anyway, Christian Braun is 84th in fantasy points per game this year. So that's very, very good. That's way better than his ADP. In my league, he went 176th overall and he's 84th per game in fantasy points in regular points leagues point setting leagues so that's very very good obviously 84th is very good that should not be on waivers he's averaging 34 minutes per game this year which is a little bit skewed because uh he just played in an overtime game so, but he's seeing around 30 minutes every single game he's played in has been 30 or more minutes 29 minutes technically but every game has been 30 or more minutes <clears throat> So, yeah, very, very good minutes numbers for Christian Braun. He's needed to play a lot of minutes on this Nuggets team because their bench is just absolutely horrible. Nuggets bench is trash, and Christian Braun, ha 
Braun has been a pretty good hustle defender for this Nuggets team. He's been a very good on-ball defender this year. They lost KCP in free agency to the Magic, so Braun just slid right into that starting shooting guard position, and they don't have a good bench at all, so he's been needing to play 30-plus minutes, and he's produced in those 30-plus minutes. So let's talk about his stats. He's shooting 56.3% from the field this year, and he's averaging 14.7 points. So he has very, very good numbers this year. Uh, as you guys can see, he's also getting six rebounds per game. If we go ahead and look at Christian Braun, that's very, very quick. Averaging six rebounds per game, 14.7 points per game, like I said, on 56.3% shooting. So very, very good numbers there. He's also been amazing in the defensive categories. He's averaging 1.7 blocks per game and 1.3 steals per game. Those defensive numbers will definitely see some regression because that's just unsustainable for a guy like Christian Braun. But he has been elite so far in these categories, so you cannot complain. He stepped up on the defensive side of things, and he's been producing 84th in fantasy points leagues per game. So if this guy is on your waiver and you guys have an extra roster spot or you got to put somebody in the IR that just got hurt or whatever, go ahead and pick him up. If you have a specific question like, should I drop so-and-so for Christian Braun, go ahead and ask it in the comments because you know, I don't know your league. But yeah, this guy should not be on your waivers if you're in like a 12-man league or whatever. So pick up Christian Braun. The second guy is going to be my boy from the Grizzlies, Scotty Pippen Jr. Scotty Pippen Jr. He is 71st in fantasy points per game this year. Grizzlies coach Taylor Jenkins has been very, very cautious with everyone's minutes so far this year, including starting point guard John Morant's minutes, which has led to more minutes for Scotty Pippen Jr. So if you go ahead and check out Scotty Pippen Jr., that's this year. He has seen 25 minutes per game this year. Like I said, the coach, Taylor Jenkins, he's been very, very cautious with everyone's minutes. John Morant has only seen like 25 minutes himself. So Pippen seeing the same amount of minutes as John Morant obviously is not going to uh, be sustainable. Like That's going to change very soon. But as of right now, that's just how it is. That's just how Taylor Jenkins has been coaching the Grizzlies. So you got to take advantage. He may be more of a short-term option than a long-term just because he is going to see his minutes decrease. But you got you to gotta take advantage of those minutes right now as it is. And he's been producing. Like I said, 71st in fantasy points per game. You just have to pick him up. If he's on your waiver, he's free, right? So just pick him up. Enjoy it while it lasts. If Once he sees his minutes decrease, you could always just drop him for another guy or you could sell high on him. So, yeah, there's that. <clears throat> he's produced, like I said, in those minutes. He's averaging 11 points per game and 8.3 assists per game year absolutely insane numbers especially for a backup he's also getting one and a half steals per game so he's been very very good on the defense side of things and the thing is too is that last year when he was getting these uh around the same minutes 25 minutes per game he also saw 1.7 steals per game so this is something that he could actually sustain he's a very good on-ball defender he's very crafty um if you're a grizzlies fan like me he used to have tyus jones who's a very very good point guard he used to get some steals as well he reminds me a lot of very good passer not going to turn the ball over that much, Scottie Pippen Jr., and he's going to get you some steals. So really, really like Scottie Pippen Jr. as a talent and in fantasy, 71st per game in fantasy points per game. So he's been very good this year. But like I said, he is going to see his minutes decrease pretty soon because John Murray has only seen 25 minutes per game when he usually gets like 35 minutes per game. So Scottie Pippen Jr., definitely more of a short term than a long term, but you got to reap those benefits of the short term. 71st, like I said, like you just got to pick him up if he's on your wire or wire. He's free. So take advantage of that, Scottie Pippen Jr., rostered in 32.9% of Then my third guy is going to be somebody that's rostered more than the last two guys, so he may not be in your wire, but he's still not rostered in half of leagues. It's going to be Santi Aldama, who's rostered in 42.2% of leagues. So if we go ahead and check Santi Aldama's stats real quick, he's 72nd in fantasy points per game this year. So, Scottie Pippen Jr., 71st in fantasy points per game. Santi Aldama, 72nd in fantasy points. That is a number that should not be on your waiver wire unless you're in like an eight-man league or something. He saw a lot of minutes to begin the season with Jaron Jackson Jr. being out. But now that Jaron Jackson Jr. is back, he, uh, Santi Aldama will see his minutes decrease a little bit. But the thing is, Jaron Jackson Jr., he's still on a minutes restriction. He's still only seeing like 25 minutes per game. So, as long as Jaron Jackson is on that minutes restriction, Santi Aldama should be around 25 minutes. So, Santi, again, another short-term waiver wire ad that will see some regression in his minutes. He will see less minutes um, as Jaron Jackson gets more comfortable, gets more minutes, gets his minutes restriction lifted. But until then, Santi, Ald Santi Aldama has been great, 72nd in fantasy per game. So, pick him up if he is on your waiver wire. You might have to get rid of him in a week or you could sell high on him or whatever. But he is worth rostering and playing as of right now. So, 
Conti is shooting 45.5% from three. That's a number that is going to regress, but has been amazing from the three-point line this year. He's shooting five and a half three-pointers per game, so that is very, very good volume. He's averaging seven and a half rebounds per game as well. The Grizzlies are a team that are horrible at rebounding the ball. They're allowing the third most rebounds per game. So a guy like Santi Aldama, who's very, very tall for his position, um, that can rebound the ball pretty well, is something that the Grizzlies are going to need him to play. Uh, they're going to need him to get solid minutes for him. They're just a, not a good rebounding team. So it's very good that he's averaging seven and a half boards per game. <clears throat> he's also getting you a block per game. So that's pretty good for defensive numbers, right? That's not bad. I mean, it's not the best, but it's not bad. And he's getting 15 and a half points per game. So like I said, he is going to see less minutes. He is going to see less usage uh, throughout probably the next week or two as Jaron Jackson gets his minutes restriction uh, lifted. But until then, he's a very, very good pickup. Very, very good plug and play in your lineup, right? Dante Aldama. And then let's go ahead and get into three ads for deeper leagues. So these are three deeper ads. These are three guys that are rostered less than 20% last time I checked. So the first guy is going to be DeAndre Hunter. So he is rostered in 16.8% of leagues, so less than 20%. The thing with DeAndre Hunter is he's currently injured. So that's the only bad thing about Hunter. So if you can wait for DeAndre Hunter, let's say you have a lineup. Let's say you're winning in your matchup or you're very confident in your matchup this week, which, you know, don't get too cocky. but can't i can't control you if you feel feeling cocky you're feeling greedy and you feel like you could wait for a guy that might be injured for like the next few games and go ahead and pick him up or if you have room on your on your roster and you just want a guy that's going to be good for you and uh you don't really necessarily need to play him go ahead and pick him up then uh, <clears throat> but if you are in need of somebody that is playing right now then prioritize the other guys that i'm going to be mentioning in the video but deandre hunter he should only be out for like a few games he's already missed a few games he's Probably should be back this week. Um, but yeah, DeAndre Hunter, he's 57th per game in fantasy points um, leagues. So that's a very, very good 57 per game. He's only played two games. So that is a number that he probably will not be retaining throughout the year. Uh, throughout the year. But <clears throat> he's been good so far when he's been healthy. Like I said, only played in two games. So small sample size. But he's averaging um, 18 points per game in those two games and 29 and a half minutes per game. Rookie number one pick, Zach Risache. On the Atlanta Hawks has been terrible this year. Risa Shea is shooting 30.3% 30 from the field and only 21.4% from three. So Hunter is going to be needed to play big minutes. He's going to be needed to play 25 to 30 minutes per game. And Risa Shea is going to be continuing to be that bad. Again, Risa Shea is only a rookie, so they're not going to be playing him that much. That's why DeAndre Hunter has seen 30 minutes when he has been healthy. Um, like I said, he's injured right now, slightly injured. He might miss another game or two. So if you are in need of a guy that's going to be playing right now, go ahead and prioritize the guys that I previously mentioned or the next two guys that I'm about to mention. But if you can wait a little bit, you can wait a few games. Go ahead and pick him up. DeAndre Hunter, he's been very good so far this year, and he's going to see around 30 minutes. And he might be cut off. He might be uh, Somebody might have cut him in your league because they can't wait uh, a few days for his injury. So if somebody did that, take advantage if you can afford to wait for him. The great pickup, DeAndre Hunter. Anyway, two more guys that are um, in for deeper leagues that are not as rostered as the guys I previously mentioned. The next guy is going to be Nick Richards, who is rostered in 13% of leagues. So let's go ahead and check Nick Richards' stats. Nick Richards is 92nd per game in fantasy points in points leagues. So that's very, very solid. Starting center, Mark Williams has been out every single game this year with a foot injury. So as long as Mark Williams is out, Nick Richards is going to see solid minutes. He's going to be that starting center. So another guy that's a short-term add only until Mark Williams comes back. When Mark Williams comes back, Nick Richards won't be effective. He won't be producing fantasy numbers anymore. But until then, we are going to be taking advantage in deeper leagues. Nick Richards, as I just said, is a short-term asset. But so far this year, he's averaging 30 minutes per game. And he's averaging almost a double-double every single game. He's averaging 10 points per game and 11 rebounds per game. And he's gotten a double-double in back-to-back -back games. So that's very, very solid for a guy off the waivers. And the center position is the most shallow position in fantasy basketball, as everybody knows. So getting a guy like this at the center position that can, you know, plug and play until Mark Williams is back, give you 10 points, 10 rebounds, possibly a double-double is very, very good getting him off the waivers for free. <clears throat> he's also averaging two blocks per game. So he's been very, very good on the defensive side of things, huge in the block category. So only 13% rostered for a solid center that's getting 30 minutes per game until Mark Williams is back. Sign me up if you guys are in need of a guy that um, 
I can produce some fantasy numbers for you right now. Bill Mark Williams is back. Go ahead and pick up Nick Richards. Only rostered in 13% of leagues. Then the last deep ad for deeper leagues is going to be Yves, Yves Missy. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Yves Missy on the Pelicans. He's only rostered in 10.2% of leagues. So let's go ahead and talk about why Yves Missy is a solid pickup in deeper leagues. So he's ranked 107th per game in fantasy points. He's a rookie, so there's a lot to learn for this guy, but he's been really, really solid off the bat in his career for this Pelicans team who are in need of a center. Pelicans have been starting Daniel Tice at center, who is obviously not good at all. So Missy has been getting 22 minutes per game this year. Um, he's scoring 8.3 points per game on 53% shooting. So again, nothing crazy for us. Uh, numbers that you're going to see for a guy that's getting 20 minutes at the center position. He's also getting 5.3 rebounds per game. So not the most rebounds per game from a center. But where he has flourished this year is on the defensive side of things. He's getting 2.3 blocks per game and a steal per game. So that's very, very good numbers on the defensive side of things for a rookie especially. And like I just said about Nick Richards, centers are the most shallow position in fantasy. So if you, if you are in need of a streamer at the center position, or just a streamer in general, or just a center for depth, a backup center for depth, this is a very, very nice pickup, Ives Messi. Um, there's potential for him to get a bigger role too. So the other guys uh, that I mentioned were mostly short-term projects. This guy, he could be a long-term project. If you have room for him on your roster and you don't need a streamer and you just want to keep him for depth, you have the room for it, he, he can be a long-term project because, like I said, Daniel Tice has been starting at the center position for the Pelicans. He's not a good center. Yves Missy is only a rookie, so there's a lot to learn for him. But there's a potential that he could be a starting center for this Pelicans team. Again, he wouldn't be getting a lot of minutes as a starter. He'd probably be getting like more 25 minutes, but he's already been 107th per game in fantasy points as a rookie in his first career three games. Really, there's there's potential for him to be even better. He should be even better than where he is now. So I like this guy as a future pickup more than a short-term pickup. You want a guy that can give you more minutes eventually down the road that could be better down the road. This is a solid guy to keep at the end of your roster and has been producing solid production so far this year, Yves Missy. So those are six guys that I mentioned. Three guys that I mentioned are Christian Braun, who's rostered in 30, around 31% of leagues. Scotty Pippen Jr., who's rostered in about 33% of leagues, more of a short guy. And then Santi Aldama, who's rostered in about 42% of leagues, more like a short, uh, short-term guy for him as well. And then for deeper leagues, uh, players that are rostered in less than 20% of leagues, DeAndre Hunter, if you can afford to wait on him, because right now he is injured, he might miss the next game, or he might play in the next game. Right now he is questionable for Wednesday's game. So, um, or for Tuesday's game, I think he plays today, right? Or sorry, today's Wednesday. I, I'm, I'm tripping right now. Today's Wednesday, so he is questionable for this game. So he might play. There's a potential that he might play, but there's also a potential that he doesn't play. So if you can wait on a guy that might not play today, go ahead and pick DeAndre Hunter up. And then Nick Richards, who's rostered in 13% of leagues, <clears throat> and he's more of a short-term guy until Mark Williams comes back. And then Yves Missy, who's rostered in only 10% of leagues, he's more of a long-term guy that you could just put on your bench and uh, play him from here and then and see if he gets more minutes throughout the year. So, yeah, those are six guys that I like on the waivers. Um, if you guys want more waiver wire videos, leave a like on this video. Leave a comment down below. If you guys have specific questions, you can should I drop blah, blah, blah for DeAndre Hunter? Should I drop so-and-so for Scottie Pippen Jr.? If you guys have specific questions that you want to ask, go ahead and ask them in the comments. I'll get to them as soon as I see them. Um, or if you have ideas for another video, I'm going to be doing a buy low, sell high video probably sometime this week. Or so be on the lookout for that. But anyway, I'll catch y'all in the next video. These fantasy basketball videos should be fun. Yeah, catch y'all in the next video.